The appearance of Susano Ueno Materasu in the creation account marks the final separation of the ethereal universe into the huge variety found within the material realm. So both divinities are obliged to join each other in order to prosper. Although Amaterasu recognizes the necessity of this union, she also finds the excesses of her brother repulsive. Susanoo is the god of storms in Shinto religion and represents the physical world. Born from the primordial creator god Izanagi, he is infamous for his mischievous and sometimes destructive behavior, therefore, he was given a reputation for being something of a trickster but has recently become related with love and marriage. The image of Susano Oda can be gleaned from various materials is rather complex and contradictory. In the Kojiki, he is portrayed first as a petulant young man, then as a violent individual causes chaos and destruction before turning into a monster slaying culture hero. Susanoo is often depicted with white hair blowing in the winds while fighting an eight-headed sea monster with a sword, the Totsuka no Tsurugi. Elsewhere, he is simply a local deity connected to rice fields with almost no traits associated with imperial mythologies. His chaotic mood and disheveled appearance are direct reflections of his status as a god of storms and his name is variously given in the Kojiki, meanwhile he is named in Nihon Shoki as Susano Ono Mikoto. Due to his nature, countless scholars have had different opinions regarding his origins and character. Based in some account, the controversial theory that the Kojiki were not based on history but rather on a certain propaganda concocted to legitimize the rule of the imperial dynasty also saw Susano as a negative figure. Arguing that he was created to serve as a rebellious opposite of the imperial ancestress of Materasu. Other scholars, however, take the position that Susanoo was not originally conceived as a negative deity, believing that Izumo Fudoki is more accurate about his original character, as a peaceful kami of the rice fields or as a harvest deity. The impetuous brother of the Japanese sun goddess was the ruler of the oceans and the source of the rain, thunder, and lightning. But because of an unruly behavior, he was banned from heaven. This attitude probably started from his birth. The Kojiki and the Nihon Shoki both agree in the descriptions of Susanoo as the son of Izanagi. He was born at the same time as his sister Amaterasu and brother to Kuyomi. The circumstances surrounding the birth of these three deities, collectively known as the Three Precious Children, differ between sources. But Susanoo and his siblings were produced when Izanagi cleans himself after visiting the underworld in a failed attempt to rescue his wife and co-creator Izanami. And while his siblings were born from their father's eyes, only Susanoo was born from the water that fell out from Izanagi's nose. However, the conflict between two of these divinities threatened to plunge the world into darkness and destroy it, but was saved by the resourcefulness of other gods. Initially, Susanoo was appointed by his father to guard Takama no Hara, but now thinking about his mother who remained in the underworld, he cried and wanted to join her but his father would not let him, so he set off in a storming rage, causing troubles all around him. Shortly after, it became obvious that Susanoo was too stormy to remain in heaven. Following this realization, Izanagi proceeded to banish his son but before leaving Susanoo went to say goodbye to his sister. On her side, Amaterasu was convinced that her brother was up to no good by one challenge to prove his sincerity. Susanoo claimed that he could best his sister creating Kami. By chewing the Magatama necklace of the sun goddess, Susanoo spat out a mist from which five male deities were born. When Amaterasu performed a similar feat by eating Susanoo's sword, only three female kami were created and all together became the base of the Japanese nobility. Proving to be a tricky move on her part, Amaterasu stated that because the necklace was hers, the male deities created by Susanoo were hers as well while the female deities she had produced from the sword of Susanoo were his. Thanks to her clever interpretation of the rules, Amaterasu won the contest. 
overwhelmed by anger after losing this challenge. Susanoo went on another destructive rampage and once again, too many rice fields and trees were destroyed. Then in a rather tasteless joke, Susanoo flayed a horse and threw its corpse through the roof of the palace where Amaterasu was quietly waving, killing one of her handmaidens in the process. Furious at her brother's outrageous behavior, the sun goddess shut herself inside a heavenly cave depriving the world of sunlight. She only came out after a substantial effort and ruse from other members of the pantheon who let her see the entrance of the cave so she could never go back in. In order to discipline Susanoo for his destructive nature, the pantheon imposed upon him a fine of a thousand tables of restitutive gifts, cut off his beard and his father expelled him from heaven. And from this divine expulsion comes one of the most famous stories about the deity. After being thrown out of heaven, the kami went to Japan and landed at Torikami in the province of Izumo, where he came across a couple absolutely terrified by something. Susanoo was told that their distress was caused by Yamata no Orochi, the terrible eight-headed sea creature that was coming to eat their young daughter. The creature had previously eaten seven of the couple's daughters in sacrifice, so the desperate parents were now down to their last child whose life was threatened by the beast, Lady Kushinada was soon coming upon her final days. For the sake of saving her life, Susanoo turned Kushinada into a comb to keep her safe into his hair, then struck a bargain with her parents that if he gets rid of the monstrous creature he could marry the beautiful girl. Agreeing to this, they followed the gods' instructions and placed eight jars full of sake at each doorway of their house. After a while, the monstrous serpent arrived, unable to refrain itself from drinking the beast collapsed out of drunkenness, making it easier for the god to hack it to pieces with his sword. Afterwards, the god noticed a lump inside the dragon's tail, cut it open until he found a great sword. And that's how Susanoo discovered the heavenly sword of gathering clouds. Mohakumo no Tsurugi, also known as the grass cutting sword Kusanagi. Susanoo restored the girl back to her normal form and married her, then looked for a suitable place in Izumo to live in. Eventually, in order to restore peace he once had with Amaterasu, Susanoo offered Kusanagi as a token of apology for his previous misdeeds. The sun goddess accepted the gift and gave it to her grandson Ninigi who later became the first ancestor of the Japanese imperial family. Together with the mirror Yata no Kagami and the jewel Yasakani no Magatama, the grass-cutting sword Kusanagi became a part of the imperial regalia as one of the three sacred treasures of Japan. Once amends were made, Susanoo's father presented him with one final task. He must take Izanagi's position as the guardian of the Yomi to which he accepted. And to this day, Susanoo serves as the guardian of the gateway to the land of the dead. It is for this reason that in addition to their violent nature, storms are often associated with death in Japanese culture. We should note here that this place Susanoo was assigned to by his father is often referred to as Nenokuni, which is seemingly considered to be more or less identical to the land of the dead, but these are totally different locations. The Yomi whose ruler is Izanami was associated with death, while Ninokuni was believed to be associated with rebirth. Throughout time, however, the two locations were confused with each other, so by the time the Kojiki and the Nihonshoki were written, the Ninokuni came to be perceived as an unclean realm of the dead. So this new conception of Ninokuni as a place of evil and impurity contributed to turn Susanoo into a kami associated with calamity and violence. A different account in the Nihonshoki relates that after Susanoo was banished from heaven, he came down to a place called Soshimori in the Korean kingdom of Silla before going to Japan. Disliking the place, he crossed the sea until arriving at Torikami. The descent of Susanoo in Soshimori seems to hint a connection between him and Korea. Because of it, the name Susanoo has been explained as being related to the Middle Korean title Susung, meaning Master or Shaman, 
Thus, the Shinto divinity is supposed in this view to have originally been a foreign entity, perhaps a deified shaman whose origins may be traced back to Korea. One of the most common tropes in mythologies is that of storm divinities fighting powerful serpent-like creatures. In Greek mythology, these were Zeus and Typhoon. In Norse tradition, it was Thor and the Midgard serpent Yormugandar. Close to Japan, Yu the Great from Chinese culture fought the nine-headed serpent Xiangliu. This trope is found in most religions of Europe and Asia and has even found its way into modern Christian and Islamic traditions. Despite his reputation as a bit of a bad boy among the Shinto divinities, Susanoo is credited with giving the gift of agriculture to humanity. He is also credited with founding the ruling dynasty in Izumo, which is also the location of a major shrine dedicated to the divinity. Susanoo is a kami with opposite features, portrayed in many stories either as an impetuous god associated with sea and storms, as a heroic figure who killed the monstrous beast, or even as a local divinity linked with the harvest and agriculture. Syncretic beliefs that arose after the introduction of Buddhism to Japan also saw Susanoo becoming conflated with gods of pestilence and disease, so he became venerated as the deity words of misfortune and calamity. Due to his mythical role in what is now considered his most famous feat that ended with his marriage to Kushinada Hime, he became to be known as the patron deity of love and marriage. Susanoo can be both benevolent and malevolent, like many storms, wind and sea deities serving under his authority. But despite this seeming moral ambivalence, he remains one of the most celebrated heroes of Japanese mythology. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching this video, so let me know what you think of Susanoo in the comment section down below. And as always, stay curious.